Hey, Allegra. Okay, so. Our attendees are guests, not members. Let's see. Good evening to everyone joining. We're um, waiting for one more member to join uh, to, to kick off. Greg, you didn't hear anything from Paul about whether he was coming or not, did you? Yeah, Paul, Paul does intend to come, so I, I think we'll... Oh, good. Okay, great. We shall have a quorum. There he is. All right. Uh, welcome, Paul. So, Greg, I, I um, can you help me with the... Uh, the kickoff language to open the meetings? Um, uh, sure. So you, I think we can just welcome everybody to the August meeting of the, the Housing Trust and uh, uh, officially call it open, I guess. All right. Okay. Fair enough. In the, in the time, not super we, formal. Read this, we read this little preamble about access to the meetings. Um, yeah. So w welcome everyone. And um, does anyone have any comment before we uh, jump into this evening's agenda? In, in the audience. Uh, let's see who's got the hands up. Paul does. Oh, yeah. 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 Do we have a quorum? One, two, three, four, five. I think so. We have five. Well, I, we're, I, we're, okay. we're missing Thank three, you. we're missing three uh, members. <laughs> I, I should count myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that was the that was my the, the question, um, but yes, uh, indeed. So uh, gracefully, we have a quorum, and uh, I don't see any comment before we uh, jump into our agenda. So first uh, order of business is to approve the minutes from July. Uh, Greg sent them around in uh, this week's packet, and um, I had a chance to review them earlier. I don't have any um, comment. I wonder if anyone else has any uh, correction or addition you'd like to make to our written record. I'm Erica, go ahead. Erica, go ahead. <laughs> it's very, very, very minor. Uh, but I believe in uh, one of the paragraphs, there's a double, um, couple of double words. And that is under the um, item number five. And the par third paragraph before we go to item number six, it just says, other than, other than. Okay, thank you. Otherwise, no comment, thank you. Good, um, Carol? Um, I'm trying to find it, which I have not exactly done. And I don't, I wasn't exactly completely happy with the, with the description of my comment about our CPA proposal. It says I have a concern about it. And that feels kind of more like uh, more negative than I want to do than I was thinking or intended or think I said although maybe I said something weird I just I feel like there will be uh we we need to do a good job of presenting our very important arguments for why yes we still need the money that's kind of my point not that it sounds like I think maybe we shouldn't get it I don't know I just didn't sound like the way it sounded but Whatever I highlighted the significance of going. Does, does that, that sounds work? good. Okay. Okay. So seeing no other comments, um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. I second. I second. Okay. Uh, so uh, all in favor, uh, let's go around. Um, Erica? Yes. Uh, Allegra? 
Yes. Carol. Yes. And I, uh, I approve. I guess we don't need to do all those for for minutes, but what minutes about approved. Paul? Let's uh, move on to our yes. next order. Of Paul, you forgot Paul. Oh, sorry, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank I you. I forgot about me too, so don't worry about right. it. Okay, we're we're, <laughs> we're even now. Okay, excellent. So uh, our next order of business is an important vote. Uh, we um, Do we have anyone from the um, organization that would like to uh, tell us if you have anything to add from what you presented at our last month's meeting? Um, yeah, they are present here. Let me, let me uh, um, allow Jessica to talk here and uh, uh, Jessica, do you want to add anything or I can promote you to a panelist if that's helpful? Um, I don't have anything new to add for information unless you're looking for project updates. I mean, there's not a huge amount that's happened in the in the past month, but we've had some couple of things. So it's up to you. I'm happy to just sit and wait for questions if that's what okay. you'd like to do. All right. Uh, if uh, anyone would like those project updates, um, please uh, let, let us know. Um, okay, so Allegra um, uh, would like to hear those. So wh why don't you uh, just share a brief overview of those updates, uh, Jessica, if you might. Sure, so um, we are still moving full steam ahead. Um, I think you are all aware that the project received a, a $500,000 earmark in the latest housing bond bill. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we continue to value engineer with our GC Kiter. Um, construction to see if we can bring the construction costs down. They, um, we had a recent meeting with them where um, they informed us that our target uh, number that we have in our budget is pretty low and we're going to need to do some, some um, serious uh, considerations here to, to get the project on budget. So that's um, another piece that's happening. Um, marketing is in full swing right now in terms of the production of materials. So that's great. And the other item that we're talking about with Kiter is um, utilizing the already committed CPA money and trust money to do a little bit of fall infrastructure work, basically getting out of the state highway layout and getting infrastructure onto the site. So we're in conversations with Kiter, who's um, been having conversations with different town staff to see how feasible and what we would need to do to to, to at least maybe get the um, mass DOT driveway work done that's been permitted and try to at least get the water and sewer lines from the public lines onto the site. So we are pushing ahead with that. If we are able to do that, that would save us a couple months in the spring and we'd be able to move straight into site work and vertical construction. So it's kind of worth us to investigate and see whether this is, is uh, um, we're able to do this. So that's the other piece that's happening. I think that's about it. Thank, thank you, Jessica. Did anyone have any follow-up questions about that update? Yeah, Allegra, please. So is the $500,000 earmark, is that included in the sources of funds that we have, or is that? So the five hundred the five hundred thousand dollar earmark is specifically for solar, so it's not represented because we don't we have value engineered solar panels out of the budget at this time, um, so that money would enable us to purchase panels and install them onto the homes. We fully intend to wire for solar, so that if that earmark for whatever reason doesn't isn't able to be uh, realized fully realized then um, you know, homeowners would have the ability to put solar panels on. Um, and we are aware that there's solar for all tax credits that will be coming down the pike here in a couple of years. So homeowners would be able to take advantage of those tax credits. But um, I'm really hoping that we can get a full panel installation on each home before somebody moves in. Yes. I really think it'll save them a lot of headaches. I think to be able to move into a house with those panels already in place, would be huge. And, um, you know, as we've sort of realized, or I've been hearing at our, our staff meetings is we, we recently had um, our home ownership department was dealing with a client who was trying to purchase a home that had a solar install that had some debt still on it. And it really complicated their sales process. So that to me also kind of spurred me to really want to make sure that we can get this solar in place. But 
as it's tied to the bond bill, we all know that, you know, they have to actually bond for the money and they have to put it forward. So it's tied to the solar panel installation. Um, we'd be happy to, um, if that money came, was realized after construction was totally completed, we would still be committed to putting the panels on the, on the homes. So, and using the money for its intended purpose. Yeah, er Erica? I just wanted to let you know that Laura had her hand up too. So it seems like she also wants to uh, make some comments, but I just had a quick question. Um, so Jessica, it sounds like if you could, uh, you would start some of the processes a little earlier. I know the uh, abutters in the community is very, very supportive of all of this, but if you're gonna do things earlier, do you have a plan for letting people know just because it's a very, very, as you know, it's a highway, it's a very, very busy um, yep. byway. Yep, we are, um, I, I am in constant communication with the direct abutters when there is any activity happening on the site. So we have we have a very robust email relationship. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, absolutely, we would be notifying them, but we're still trying to determine the feasibility of it and what are the steps that we would need to take to actually make that happen. It's the, there's some questions in terms of tying into the water and sewer in my mind. Um, and we have a number of other questions that we're trying to flush out right now, but we are, we are trying to get shovels in the ground a little bit earlier than we intended because we know it's going to save us money and it's going to save us time in the long run. Great. And I'll defer to Laura, whatever she'd like to add. Yeah. Get, get, promote. Yeah. Great. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're all muted now. <laughs> no. Um, so I just wanted to add, Jess has been doing a bang up job trying to raise the gap financing that we need. So in, and in addition to the um, housing bond um, earmark, she's also submitted an application to a foundation, Eastern Bank Foundation. Um, and at least we've made it through the preliminary screening for that foundation because they want to have a conversation with us. So, um, you know, when we when Jess presented before, they were kind of multi-pronged approach to filling the gap. One of the ways was coming to the trust for money, but we had two other ways um, that look like they're going to be fruitful. So I think that's good news um, for, for all of us. So I just wanted to throw that in. And, you know, as Amherst is seeing in its own capital projects, the longer you wait, the more it costs. So, you know, time is of the essence with all of our work because the sooner we're ready to go, the more we can contain those construction costs. It just has been a crazy escalation over the years. So I would just add that we're doing everything in our power to kind of front load and fast track the actual construction um, as a way, again, to try to uh, close that gap in financing. I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I guess now turning to our own uh, discussion, we're seeking to vote on uh, approving the request or not approving the request for $350,000 to uh, complete the, the budget as requested. And uh, I'd like to, I guess, share that at our planning meeting, I invited John Hornick to share his own insights from the institutional history of this trust and get some perspective. And I'll just kind of relay that his... Um, learning over the years being on the trust was to prioritize the burden hand, the opportunity that is present and, and available to, to um, support the, the construction of housing and to recognize the, um, the, the, the value of such a big project. And the fact that at the margin, we're talking about um, around $12,000 per unit that get, get unlocked through the, the trust action. So I just share that. Um, and the other point that I asked about was uh, what kind of due diligence should the trust be doing? And um, John's comment was, well, to remind us that the state's uh, processes are extremely rigorous and difficult to get through, number one. And number two, um, Nate, maybe you can speak to this uh, now, that the town has a standard set of commitments that go along with um, the kind of grant that is being asked of, of us uh, here. So yeah, Nate, I wonder if you could just share yeah. that um, in, you know, in case other members weren't aware of those details as I wasn't. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we entered into a grant agreement, you know, contract with 
the entity, whether it's Valley or someone else. And usually we have conditions about um, benchmark funding release on certain things, whether it's building permits or, you know, they have to show a full budget. We typically require also um, an affordable housing restriction. That is a separate document between the town and the developer. Sometimes we combine it with the other, um, the other funders, sometimes it's separate. So, you know, these are essentially, some of these are public funds and they're administered through the trust. So we, we do, you know, have um, some safeguards so that the money, you know, if something happens, we could, you know, try to recover the money, but typically we put safeguards in that the public benefit is the affordable housing and it remains that way. Thank you, Nate. So uh, what comments and questions, points of view do members of the trust have about the, the proposal in front of us? Yeah, Paul, please. So I, I've talked about this before. I mean, this is, I think, probably the one of the best and most important projects the town has. You know, home ownership opportunities are um, rare. Uh, this is really generational change. And I think so I really value this project. Uh, the challenge I have with this is um, two things. One is um, we just sort of are looking at this sort of haphazardly as a, as a committee. Like we look at these things one off. We don't know uh, spending money on this means we're not spending it on something else. We don't know what the something else is. Um, I value John's comment. I think he's right on that, that you seize the day, sort of the, the opportunity that's in front of you. Um, and... You know, and I say I also recognize the value of this money early in the project to have a commitment to make sure the project is is can go forward. And you know, Valley is a terrific developer. All those things being said, um, I guess my biggest concern is like in what I said last time. I think Laura said they if the, if we say yes to this, then they won't be coming back to the town for additional funds. And if that's the case, um, I can support that. Um, and I guess that's the question to Valley. Uh, uh, great. So, um, uh, Jessica or uh, uh, do, do you, Laura, do you want to address Paul's question now, or uh, or come back to that after we discuss a little further? Yeah. Uh, whatever ahead. the preference yeah. of the trust Please, is. Go, 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 go ahead, Laura. Let's uh, since the point is uh, is alive on the table. Uh, this is Jessica. So just. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, I was talking to I didn't hands. know if Laura was on as well. I'm here. Um, oh, there she is. Go ahead, Laura. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about it? Go ahead. So um, I had spoken, Paul, just assuming that the town could set a condition um, with its commitment that says, you know, this is the last money we're giving from this bucket to this project and just be clear about it that way. Um, I think that's cleaner than asking the applicant, you know, please, will you not come back again? Because <laughs> um, that's hard <laughs> for us to commit to. But I think it it's a fair thing for the town at some point to say, this is your third time. You know, it's we're this we love the project, but this is the amount that we can give. Um, and, and that's what I would suggest if that's the feeling of the committee that they want to kind of that they do want to give money and that they do want to have it be the end of the end of the line for for town resources. Uh, Paul, you want to follow up? Uh, yeah, just uh, I have a question if um, Nate and Greg, if they have a recommendation for the for the committee. Well, we haven't talked, Greg and I haven't talked necessarily together about this. Um, I think that you know, with the the this request, the cost per unit is still not a lot. So you know, in the past, the town has funded you know units up to eighty or a hundred thousand dollars or more. So as a you know, cost per unit is still not there. Um, you know, the trust will be getting additional funding through CPA and payment in lieu. I do think it is a lot. I I you know, um, the town is also putting in CPA funding. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, I, I kind of, uh, I think that this could be recommended and then, you know, if they really do come back, then it's, uh, I think the trust could really scrutinize it and see whether or not it's, you know, a, 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 an additional request after this is really warranted. Um, you know, I think Valley tried to 
and, and often developers won't come in with what they might need right away just because it's an overwhelming number. And so, you know, oftentimes they might come back a few times knowing that it seems like it's an easier approach, but then, you know, but then every time that happens, people question it. And so, you know, Wayfinders did something similar with the project they're proposing in East Amherst. I think they originally said they would like, you know, $2 million. And it's just like, well, no, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. But, you know, that's, they're saying, well, that's what they think they could use locally. And, and it wasn't that much, but, you know, it's kind of like if someone came out and said that, you'd say, well, geez, that's, you know, um, and so sometimes an incremental approach is better. I, I yeah, I mean, um, you know, right now there isn't, there aren't other projects. I think there's um, funding available if something were to arise. I don't think that, you know, this would preclude the town or trust supporting other projects if, you know, if there had to be some, some other funding. Um, there's CPA and there's some other trust money available. Carol? I had to put my hand down. I keep changing my mind. I just think this is an incredibly important project and needs to go forward. And I would be in support of asking Valley to at least just tell us they have no intention of coming back for this project. <laughs> One of the things that impresses me about you guys is like you're already starting to plan to do something here, even though you don't have all of the funding quite there yet. I find that, that impressive. And it feels to me like you will find a way to make it happen. And I think that's great. And so I would like to, yes, give you the $350,000 and know that you really, something very dramatic and horrendous and whatever would have to happen for you to come back again. That's my two cents. Erica? <clears throat> I also think this is really an important project. I actually live around the corner from the project uh, or the development because I know how people respond to the term project, even though I grew up in a project. Um, it, I think it is really very important just in terms of um, the size, as well as the fact that it's home ownership, as well as the fact it's an opportunity to really do some um positive cultural change, both for the community as well as the community that's going to be created here. They'll be part of our donor community. Um, and the amount of outreach work that is so uh, thoughtful, that is so impressive to me that I think is just so important that we support that. Usually when people have cost increases, they cut around, okay, well, let's do a little less outreach or we can just do flyers, et cetera. You are highly committed to really ensuring that marginalized and individual communities who have not had access to affordable housing have an opportunity to get this. So I'm absolutely in favor of this. And Paul, I get what you're saying in terms of um, not looking at the bigger picture. I think we're doing that with our strategic plan. And I think there's probably gonna be a cutoff point uh, where we're now gonna say is that, okay, now we're gonna look at the plan and then we're gonna make a decision about how we're gonna use the money. But right now, this is a bird in hand and I think we should go for it. Allegro, would you like to share any comments or, or, or uh, questions? Sure, I mean, I think that it is a important project. And I think with our conversations thus far about what our strategic plan goals will be, I think it is in line with what we've talked about, even if we're not quite there yet. Um, and I do think that there's a lot of buy-in and support from other boards and committees. For example, I know that the um, reparations assembly had mentioned this particular project in their final report. I know that um, the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, of which I am the co-chair, is interested in having um, a conversation and maybe a presentation from the person who's doing outreach um, at one of our committee meetings, because again, it does tie in with, I think, getting a different, you know, a different idea about affordable housing and home ownership to more marginalized groups. And I think that, um, again, this is what we have in front of us right now. Um, and we have the money there and there will still be some money in our pot. Um, obviously there is a big project that's coming down the pipeline in East Amherst and hopefully our funds will replenish by then in case there's a proposal in front of us about that. But as of right now, I haven't seen one, right? <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I think, 
and and I agree that this is a, a second big chunk of money that we're thinking about um, releasing to this project, which I think, again, is important. And I think with the budget that they presented, this would, for what the numbers are in front of them now, help fill that gap. Like we would, you know, if everything falls into place that they have proposed, the project will be fully funded as the budget stands right now. So I do think that that is an important consideration as well. Thank you, Allegra. And, and uh, I guess speaking for myself, I um, am also in inclined to unlock this opportunity if if we're in that position. And I um, I, I think we're all uh, favorably disposed. And so maybe we can take a, a minute to talk about um, what uh, language or proviso or um, uh, uh, the, the spirit of our, our vote to express the uh, idea that we would like this to be the, the actual um, grant that unlocks this project and, and that we aren't um, in this, you know, in having this conversation again. Um, uh, so do, are there any suggestions on that front? Um, uh, I guess, Nate, you, you had a view that um, may, maybe we don't have to include anything spe special in the vote as such. No, I mean, I think that, you know, unless there is a specific request from the developer, you know, we would say that this would be for, you know, the project, right? So it's to aid in the development and construction of housing. Sometimes, you know, they might want the funding specifically for a certain part if they need it for, you know, because of the way the budget might work out or how they have to present it to other agencies. But, you know, for, you know, to me, it's just a general development request, not, you know, specific for something. Um, Paul, what, 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 what do you see a, a way of trying to, um, you know, put the, the spirit of your comment into how we approve this? Yeah, based on the sort of uh, comments uh, by Laura last meeting in this meeting, I would I say that we would approve the um, allocation of funds um, for, I think it's $350,000 for this project for general costs, however they need to use it. I don't think we should specify, I think they need flexibility for that. Um, subject to the understanding that um, the developer um, does not come back to the um, the trust for additional funds. Okay, um, so uh, let let's uh, see if there are any comments on on that language um, before we uh, put together a motion. Um, uh, would anybody like to uh, you know re refine or comment on the? proposal that that Paul laid out Se seems like that's uh copacetic to to the group um could we have a, a motion uh so phrased um, um I okay. move that we approve the Funding in three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars to the valley, um, with the provision that they will not come seeking additional funds from the trust for this particular project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have a second? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but before we vote, let me uh, let's hear from Laura. Just a hand came up. Uh, was that unintentional, Laura? Raise your hand. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt a process that's going so well. Okay. I just was uh, going to say, you, the language could be that we that we never darken your door again. <laughs> uh, uh, well, so we'll we'll remember that. Uh, <laughs> it's in the it's in the YouTube, uh, okay. and uh, but we do have uh, a motion on on the table, so. Um, uh, Erica. I second it. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, go around to see who approves of the motion as, as, uh, Allegra phrased it. Um, uh, let's start with Paul. Yes. Carol. Yes. 
Allegra. Yes. <laughs> and Erica. Yes. And I, I also vote uh, yes. So the motion passes. Um, Laura, you have your hand up again. Do you want to add add something? Good Lord, I I don't know what's going on. Thank you. That's all. Thank you very much. We really Thank appreciate you. the yes. consideration you've given us. We certainly appreciate the commitment of funds and we will definitely keep you posted as we go forward. Um, we're super excited about this one. So thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I kept raising her hand as a practical joke. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, you know, that was a, a, a big vote for my uh, my first time chairing. So I'm, I'm glad that went smoothly. Um, uh, all right. So next up, we uh, get to hear about what's going on with this exciting um, the community engagement plan for the housing production plan. Uh, so who, who's going to present on that front uh, for us, Greg? Uh, we have guests from Barrett Planning Group who I'm promoting to uh, be panelists. Okay. Uh, right now, here's Lily. And I bet this is Judy here. Uh, and Tony, uh, shall I um, promote all three of you? Is that... Oh. Hi, Greg. Um, yes, that, that should be fine. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah, can I just, I'll just introduce briefly um, uh, Tony Young and Lily Kramer um, and Judy Barrett of Barrett Planning Group, uh, who are uh, 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 helping us, uh, the town of Amherst, um, jump into our housing production plan, which you all have heard about uh, a great deal uh, over the months. Um, and it's finally here. Um, and so we, I was excited to um, uh, have uh, the team at Barrett share a little bit about, um, you know, just a, a little more detail about what this, uh, this process is, what the outputs are and, uh, and what, um, you know, what the, the various opportunities for the trust and others in the community uh, to participate are. Um, so, um, I think, uh, with that, I'm, I'm good, but Gaston, if you, you can add yeah. something or we can hand it to Tony, if you want. No, no. I mean, uh, we, we've been looking forward to this and are excited that, uh, the rubber is uh, hitting the road. So um, uh, please, the floor is yours. So oh, thank you. We're excited to be here too. Tony, do you want to start the slides and then we can oh, yes. kind of work through sure. those? That would be great. I get screen share privileges, I assume, yes? Uh, uh, yes, I should. Yeah. Sorry, just give me a second. All right, there you go. How does, how does this? It's coming up, it looks good. Let's have to go back to the first one. <laughs> there we are. So I'm really just gonna tee this up. Um, Tony's going to kind of go through most of the slides. Um, I'm Judy Barrett. We have three of us here this evening. In addition to myself, we have Tony who's gonna walk you through most of the slides and Lily, Lily is also on. Uh, and in a couple of weeks, we're going to be descending on Amherst for a couple of days of nonstop interviews, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, we do a lot of work in this sphere. Uh, I was actually really happy to follow, um, you know, our presentation following the conversation with Valley CDC. Um, you folks are lucky uh, in Amherst that you have a really competent CDC to work with. Um, many of the suburban communities we work with and even many of the smaller towns do not have an asset like that. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's really great for us because it tells us there's going to be some capacity partners to uh, to work with. Um, so we have we've done several housing production plans out in your area. We've done a lot of them all over the state. Uh, I've been in the field for 35 years. Um, our firm does kind of three major things. We do a lot of work in comprehensive plans. We do work in zoning, and, we, and this world of affordable housing is very much uh, a kind of a centerpiece of our efforts. So we're happy to be here. It's wonderful for me to be back. I worked with Amherst about six years ago um, on a previous housing study, and um, I kind of fell in love with the town, so I'm really happy to be back. I think with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Tony so he can kind of walk through the plan for the project. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Judy. Um, hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all for the first time tonight. Um, <clears throat> all right, my name is Tony Yoon. 
And Judy, Lily, and I are you know very excited to be assisting the town to update the town's um, housing production plan. Uh, so far, we've been working with Greg and Nate to plan out the process and schedule of this project. Um, and you know, we're excited to share some of the ideas that we have tonight. So I'll just introduce a little bit um, about what a housing production plan is for those in attendance who might not be familiar. Um, it is a state regulated plan, meaning that it must follow the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities Guidelines, uh, which aims to develop and preserve affordable housing and attainable housing um, as required by the state's Affordable Housing Law, Chapter 40B. Um, while housing is a universal issue, we intend to help find solutions um, you know, that benefit the community as a whole, but we have to keep in mind that housing production plans are primarily focused on serving low and moderate income households. Um, the last housing production plan was updated over 10 years ago, so we're updating that plan now to reflect today's environment um, and housing issues that in some ways may sound familiar, but um, in other ways are dramatically different. And so the most important asset for this plan is the community itself. Um, the agenda packet includes the our community engagement plan, which outlines our um, proposed outreach efforts and several opportunities throughout different stages of the project uh, in which members of the public can become involved and contribute um, and share um, you know, their thoughts, uh, feedback, and input um, as they would like. And you know, I want to emphasize that this plan will be a product of this collective action and input uh, in which our engagement strategies will help us achieve. And you know, of course, with significant guidance from the, the Housing Trust and um, the Town of Amherst. So first, um, we want to distinguish uh, stakeholders from advocates uh, in the community uh, because both represent different groups and thus you know, have faced different obstacles um, in their daily lives and offer you know, different perspectives. So our definition of stakeholders refer to those that directly face problems related to housing and are in need of housing um, that they can't afford. Uh, advocates are groups that represent and serve the interests of these vulnerable populations and you know those at risk of being unable to find housing or um, even at risk of losing their homes. So it's important to recognize these different uh, you know, groups of uh, the community and different viewpoints so that we can address these issues that um, that you know may arise and that we can tackle them at different angles. And then we have advisors, which comprises the housing trust and the planning department, both of whom will lead and provide guidance, uh, direction and assistance um, to the process along the way. And you know, lastly, the housing production plan requires approval from um, the town manager, uh, uh, Paul Buckelman, as well as uh, the planning board um, for a submission to EOH uh, LC. So it is very important that they are regularly informed and kept up to date on our progress along the way. Um, Carol, did you raise your hand? I I did. I'm I'm find the list of stakeholders curious and I wonder. Most of the th all the most of those things I can see how they're related to housing, but when I come to students and faith-based communities, it seems like an odd take. For instance, if student why, students, yes, they need housing, but so do elders, so do families with young children, uh, and faith-based associations. What about 
town businesses? What about employees that work here and can't find housing? It just all of the things that were clearly about housing, I get. But to include students without including those other things is just curious to me. And I wondered if you could explain it. Sure. Um, that's a really good point. This isn't a comprehensive list of everyone that we want to um, in include in these different, like our definitions for these different groups. Um, these are, you know, including but not limited to, in a sense. So we do consider, you know, the elderly um, employees that need housing um, in the community as uh, stakeholders as well. Okay, maybe you could put that in there. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> of course. All right. Um, oh, yes, Laura. I think Laura's hand is actually stuck up, that, Tony. That's so. that, 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 it's beautiful. All right. Um, so moving on, uh, this is our tentative schedule for uh, the major components of the housing production plan um, and engagement events. A more detailed schedule is in the engagement plan, but we uh, simplified it here um, for this meeting and you know, so that we can focus on some key items. Um, so the three major components are going to be the housing needs assessment, the housing goals, and the strategy development. Um, so we'll want to complete the housing needs assessment by early November, um, and then the housing goals by sometime in December, and then have a complete draft of the strategy development as well as the full draft by um, end of February, March, so that it can be, um, you know, submitted to the town for public review and um, subsequently approved in April. And then be oops, below that is our proposed schedule for the series of community outreach efforts we're conducting. Uh, I'm not going to go into each individual event, so now please refer to the community engagement plan for more details on them. Um, but I do want to mention that, you know, as Judy had already mentioned, we our first round of stakeholder interviews is coming out very soon um, on August 20th to the 22nd, and then the following week on uh, August 26th and 27th. Um, and then I want to focus on the two community meetings here that are going to be uh, larger in scale, and they're going, and we want them to be open to the entire community uh, in town. So, the first community meeting is um, scheduled to be on October first. At this point in the schedule, we we'll, we will have most of the housing needs assessment done. So, um, we'll want to uh, showcase any findings and or highlight any findings that we will have. Um, from that, as well as sharing any progress in housing development and um, any accomplishments that had been um, that in town that have been since the uh, last uh, housing production plan um, in 2013. And uh, also having a, um, a visioning activity that will help us start thinking of housing goals that are going to be measurable and achievable in the future. So following that, we'll have the second round of, or the second community meeting in December. Um, we have penciled in December 3rd, and um, we will, just to be safe, we will um, save the following week uh, for a snow day in case that day has inclement weather, um, just to keep in mind. Um, so at this meeting, we'll want to report any findings from the first community meeting and then introduce um, some draft goals that we'll have at that point to solicit their feedback and then brainstorm some strategies for implementation. And so with all of this said, we would you know, really appreciate guidance and direction from the um, Housing Trust along the way. Um, so while this is all very tentative, um, you know, we are thinking of attending your trust meetings, you know, roughly once a month 
to you know, provide updates and ask for you know further ideas and feedback. So you know we would think you know we think it would be a good idea to attend these meetings um, you know at key stages in the schedule. Um, so following this meeting, uh, we will you know maybe meet again sometime next month to you know at that point we will be deep in writing the housing needs assessment. Um, so we'll we're going to have a lot of questions that we want to ask, um, you know, regarding data and other findings that we have found and um, see if you would have any feedback on that and what kind of information you would want us to include in this component. And also that would be right before the first community meeting, so we can also discuss and plan for that as well. Um, and again, this is all tentative, um, so please you know, if you have any thoughts after this, um, if you know, if you want to readjust some of the schedule, uh, we'd be happy to hear that. Um, say in November, we'll have some draft goals, um, some working draft goals that we'll want your feedback on as well. And um, it'll also be before the second community meeting. So we can also um, plan together on that as well. And then you know, meetings in January and February, we'll be focusing on oops, um, strategies and implementation. Um, I know this will be a very important piece of the plan. So, you know, we think it would be good to meet a little bit more frequently, um, catch, you know, which will help us catch any errors that, um, that might arise before, you know, as we're wrapping up the project um, in March and April. Um, and so the meetings in March and April will be, you know, wrapping up the final items and um, any revisions um, of the plan. All right. So again, for this plan to work, um, you know, not only during the process of developing it, but you know, for it to work once the plan is adopted, uh, we need community expertise and public participation. And so this is where we lean on to the housing trust for direction and leadership, especially when it comes time to review you know, housing goals and to develop strategies for implementation. You know, your expert knowledge in you know, town resources is going to be extremely helpful for us to identify you know, what strategies are realistic um, and what areas in town have the most potential for housing opportunities and um, you know, other things like that. So, and you know, again, this is this all should be a very transparent and honest process. So we ask that trust lend us support in publicizing this work and encourage part public participation when the time comes. All right. So again, we will have our first round of community interviews coming on the 20th to 22nd. Those will be in person at town hall. Um, and then the following week, we will have a few sessions on the 26th and 27th, and those will be over Zoom. And Greg has sent out um, email invitations to a number of stakeholder and community groups earlier this week. So thank you for that. And thank you to those who have already signed up. And we are all looking forward to that. Thank you. So if I could just add, you know, I, I think um, the most important thing to us is to be able to give you a plan that Amherst can implement. There are housing plans that um, we've worked on where the community wasn't really too engaged and just sort of wanted to check a box, which was to say they had a housing production plan for Chapter 40B purposes. And those are plans that generally don't get implemented. So we can bring a lot of technical expertise, but we can't bring the community knowledge um, and the leadership um, and the direction that you folks can. So it will be really important to us to work with you um, and to get direction from you uh, all the way through this. So that in the end, you have a plan you can actually do something with. Uh, that's what planners want. You know, We want you to end up having housing built where you want it to be and where it's realistic so that your developer partners actually have opportunities to 
increase the supply of affordable housing in your community. Thank you so much. I um, I guess maybe we can go into some questions now and, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll jump in with my first question, which is just, can you, um, I don't know if this is for more for Greg or for Barrett, um, who are the stakeholders that have been invited uh, for later this month? Sure, I can speak to that. Um, uh, thanks, Gaston. Um, and, and maybe just to insert too, you know, I think, you know, we, we Tony shared this a little bit, but I want to emphasize too, and Judy as well, uh, you know, the deliverables here to me that are really exciting, you know, are, you know, as far as implementation, you know, are things like we will have concrete strategies, you know, there will be, um, you know, a, a site list, you know, we'll have some great images of different housing typologies we might want to pursue, you know, sort of concrete things that can both serve as goals for the town, but then also, um, you know, I, ideally help us um, both as the trust, but certainly as the broader town, imagine, uh, you know, where we can go a little bit and then go there. Um, as to the stakeholders, um, so those invites went out, uh, you all were invited, um, and I, uh, uh, I certainly encourage you to RSVP for one of those meetings uh, or focus groups. Um, sorry, I forget what we're calling this set of, of meetings actually, but in any case, the email you got from me, <laughs> click on that link and sign up. Um, uh, so so your, yourselves, other town boards, community stakeholders from social service agencies, folks from the development world, so both uh, nonprofit developers like Valley um, who are building, uh, you know, projects like, um, you know, like the Amherst Community Homes we just heard about, um, uh, and also some folks from the for-profit development community, both those who are involved in inclusionary housing, um, and also uh, perhaps even folks who are doing smaller developments, but who are going to have insights on our development process uh, here in town, um, which will be helpful uh, to, um, you know, to bear as they develop this plan, um, you know, and then uh, sort of various, you know, kind of other folks from the nonprofit world, um, but who are kind of serving folks uh, who are um, uh, affected by a lack of affordable homes. Um, um, and then, and then, sort of public boards as well. So the, the trusts, we we also invited council members, planning board members, uh, members of the disability access committee. Um, you know, sort of sets like that. Um, that's kind of the quick thumbnail. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Greg. Uh, Erica. Thank you. Um, so I do want to go back to what Carol mentioned, uh, and I think. Community engagement is so critical for this process. Um, and it's probably, I think, one of the more challenging in terms of inclusion um, mm -hmm. in Allegra. Allegra and oops, Nate can uh, speak a little bit to this as well. When we did um, our community forum, we try to find as many um, emails, um, people who could actually talk to other people because there are a lot of people who are not on email. Um, but by word of mouth. Uh, and we also wanted to make sure that we had the capacity to have people uh, be able to speak in their own language. So we had um, the capacity of having interpreters there at the same time. Um, and we, we were able to get 60 people to come in person, which was pretty, I think, pretty significant. But I think we want a pretty huge, and we had, I think, about 28 uh, online um, respondents. Um, I know that I walked through the town and went to a lot of cafes and restaurants to try to get employees um, to participate. And I know a lot of people that I spoke to said um, they gave up on Amherst. And unless we had uh, rentals or, or home ownership available right now, they weren't interested in responding. So, I mean, I think it's challenging, but I think some of the people who probably have uh, really important things to say are probably the more more challenging to try to get to participate in this. And so we have to be very innovative. And I think we have to use uh, our contacts and our influencers um, to try to get people to, to, uh, you know, to participate in this. So that was just one. The other question I, I have, that was really not a question, it was more of a comment, but uh, the other question I had was though, um, the town-wide events uh, in the document says the consulting team will provide materials to town staff or members of boards and committees um, to do, then do education and outreach. So when would that happen for us to have enough information to actually be able to do that? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that last part? 
Sure, it says town-wide events. The consulting team will provide materials to town staff or members of boards and committees who plan to attend in-person events as they happen throughout the year. These events may provide additional opportunities for the town to share information and updates regarding the HPP with the public and solicit participation. So I'm wondering if that is sort of staged and stepped um, and then when would that start happening uh, and what the expectations would be of us to do that? Yeah, and that's actually a fair question. I don't think we have a specific date in there. I'm going to turn the question back to you. If you know you're going to a meeting and you're expected to have briefed some materials beforehand, how much in advance do you need that content? Because every board I work with kind of has a different answer. It depends on how busy people are, um, you know, how many boards and committees they're on. What's, I mean, is a week ahead of time enough? What works for you folks? Uh, I'm not trying to feed an answer to you. I'm just trying to get a sense of what would work because we do need to get that detail straightened out. And I don't think, I'm not sure we have that plugged in yet. Yeah. I can speak for myself. A week would be very good because I'd want to see it. And if there were any edits that I needed to make, or if I didn't understand whatever is I'm presenting, I would need time back and forth beforehand. So minimally a week would be really good. Okay. Anybody else have thoughts on that? Sure. Um, so I think these town-wide events, it can, there's no set date because we, um, we don't know exactly what or when these are going to take place. Um, they can be, you know, as informal as, um, you know, a festival that, you know, that, that, that the town of Amherst has, you know, annually and that, um, you might have a table there or booth. Um, if, you know, uh, no, that's totally voluntarily. But um, if you were to, you know, table a booth at, you know, one of these festivals, do you want to publicize this uh, housing production plan? And, um, you know, if it's, and it really depends like at which stage we are in this process, you know, if it's at the end where we have the complete draft, um, or we have a, a a very fully written draft out and um, ready to be approved, um, then there's not really that much room for public input at that point. And um, and so, at you know at that time maybe you know we would want to advertise here's a you know a full draft of the the plan. Please take a take a look. Whereas if it's in the middle of the process, if this festival was happens to take place in the middle of a you know, while we're writing out, um, you know, housing goals or before the second community meeting happens. Uh, and maybe we want to advertise, you know, we have a community meeting coming up. Um, you know, please attend if you can. And at that point, we will um, be creating flyers to advertise this event. And then we'll share that with you to distribute. So that's just one example. Well, there, there is a big annual party called the Amherst Block Party, and I believe it's September 19th. You, you, you have that on your agenda already? Okay, good. So that's an example of an event where at least some other committees I've worked with, um, they might have a booth or something, and we would provide a couple of display boards with questions. Make it Make just the engagement very simple for people. We might have a question on a board, or we may have a couple of questions. We can, you know, provide a set of colored dots and people can pick and choose, or they can put post-it notes up depending upon what the board is. Um, but that's a very kind of low tech, but easy way to say, we're working on a housing production plan. Um, you know, give us your thoughts and we would have some, a few questions so people aren't just flying blind, but We've done that kind of thing before, and it's and it's frankly fun. And and you get to talk to people who may never show up at a public meeting, whose name never shows up on an interview list, but by God, you've got their attention. Thank you, Carol. Well, I, I was just going to say that for something like the two uh, the two big meetings that you are hoping to do. I think it would be helpful to have something that we could use to put out in the world longer than one week in advance. Oh, sure. If we're going to actually try to 
do something with it to get the word out, then yeah. a week doesn't seem like enough. That's all. Yeah. I mean, for, for outreach, it, you need more than a week. If there's something that we wanted you folks as the steering group here to be able to read before the meeting so you would kind of know what we're coming in with, I'm, that might we might give you that a week ahead. But certainly outreach, oh my gosh, no, a week is nowhere near enough. I mean, you really want to start. A, a month can be too long. I, some of this depends on the town, but certainly at least three weeks ahead, you want to have some serious outreach going on. And so we would provide you're going to have to tell us what you want, but typically flyers. Um, we might have a flyer with a QR code that takes people who have um, smartphones to a site where there's more information. We can kind of build this with you as we go along. I, I can't say there's kind of one way to do this. It's part of why we want to get to know you so we know what's going to work for you. Thank you. Paul? Yeah, so when the Energy and Climate Action Committee was doing their um, climate action plan, they did, they were at the Black Party, Black Party and a lot of other places as well, doing yeah. the same kind of thing, very interactive. Um, we could talk with that with um, Stephanie Ciccarello, who's our sustainability director, about some of the techniques they use. But it was really the committee members who were there that were engaging. Right. It was really staff. Um, so it's like people from the community saying, we want your feedback, help us uh, collect information. But I think I, you're right that, that you do connect with lots of, it's a very popular event in town. Is that a day long event or is that all day or afternoon or what is no, it? No, it's, like, it's like four, four to eight typically. Okay. I think you're on mute. Yes, so. No, I, do, do any members have, have, have any comments? I guess my, my question is what concrete questions do you have for us right now? um that that how can we help you right now um uh, team barrett um you know i don't i mean i don't have anything concrete for you tonight we will okay. have concrete for you this was mainly us to come and see you and say we're here um we're working on the plan this is kind of the overall framework for the project um but i didn't come with a quiz for you but i can at the next meeting so I really, I think this is really informational for us. Um, okay. So you folks meet every month. Is that what your schedule is? Okay. So by next month, we'll have more content for you. Good. Well, I, I guess I just do want to, since it's only a few weeks away, September 19th, I want to underscore that, that 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 does really seem to be a worthwhile event for you all. And um, does anyone have any comment or words of wisdom you want to share with uh, with our consulting team uh, before we we uh, wrap up this agenda item. Erica, uh, it's it's not a words of wisdom. I was just looking at um, some of your um, sort of methods of communications, and I do remember that you know when we did the outreach, um, uh, people kept on saying the schools are really a great opportunity to connect with families and that they have their own bulletins. And so maybe creating, you know, blurbs um, for, you know, the, the school bulletins uh, in terms of how families can, you know, be connected to this, how they can participate, why it's so important, et cetera, would be really important to do. So yeah. I just want to make sure, yeah, that we do that. That would be really helpful. So sometimes when in towns we work with School committees have a policy that they won't let anything go in the kids' bags to go home at night that's not related to the schools. So if your school department has a more liberal policy, it's a great idea. You know, parents just have to be ready to look at the bottom of the bag. But I mean, I agree with you. The schools can be a great method of outreach. The, the high school um, parent guardian organization has their act together with announcements digitally so um they have a monthly email at least that 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 might be a good venue um greg okay um yeah i just want to uh just re-emphasize um one concrete way you know an initial step you all did receive invites to those um focus groups coming up in a couple of weeks um and we'd love your participation in one of those um that that's kind of the initial concrete way uh, to jump into this um, and if anybody wants to, you know, uh, get a little extra bonus points, um, I might want some help doing some follow-up outreach, you know, and, and you know, and there, there might, there might be, um, community stakeholders that haven't responded to an invite, um, that, um, 
some of you might know. So I'll, I, you know, I, you know, maybe I'll send an email to the trust if I'm trying to track some of those folks down um, and, and ask for volunteers. So look out for that as well. Thank you. And I guess to our members, if you're searching your email and you search for Greg and, and Barrett, you'll uh, you'll probably get to the right email. So thank you so much for joining us this evening and, and look forward Thanks. to uh, working with you over this project. Yep, we're really looking forward to it as well. Thank you so much for your time. Our pleasure. Yes, thank you. Nate. Yeah, for trust members, the um, you know, we do have a housing production plan from 2013. And, you know, I guess we could send that out. There's an executive summary, but it, it, you know, it's a lengthy document, but if you did a quick read or you looked at sections, it'll give you a sense for what, you know, what a plan could include. And if you think there's any gaps or things um, that we'd want to see in this one, but, you know, we, we did have one from 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. So, you know, if you're, if you're curious, it's available and, um, you know, it could give you a sense for what kind of what it could look like. Erica. I just have a quick process question. Um, I know that they will come to the trust meetings and provide updates, but I'm just wondering, or maybe assuming that Gaston, you might be um, also meeting with them. I mean, I think it's hard for them to maybe um, have, you know, it, it might be helpful to synthesize some of the information yeah, sure. context. And so I really think you, I would love for you to be the lead yeah. on Oh, you know, uh, thank you. Yes, indeed. So um, uh, we'll communicate with Greg to find the best uh, cadence, but uh, one productive way to move, move forward would be for you to join our planning meetings, which are, um, you know, in the middle of the day on a Monday uh, or a Thursday, I can't remember. But in any case, that might be a meeting where then I can give a report to the trust for that month we can, you know, alternate as 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 fits the case that month. It's fine. That works. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, good suggestion, Erica. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, and so I guess we shall proceed to our our next agenda item, which is picking up on our strategy. I'm uh, welcoming Shelley in, into the space okay. now. Uh, if the thing works like it should. And th thanks to uh, folks at Barrett very much. Yep. I'm gonna uh, uh, and, and uh, Tony and Judy and Lily. I'm gonna put you back as uh, as, as group attendees here, if that's okay. Totally fine. Shelly's right. great. You're working with a real pro, so. Oh, I know. You like? Yep. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Hello. Shelly, there you are. Okay. Yes. Hi. Welcome. So are we, are we ready to jump into the, the next step? Okay, great. So um, Greg, are you able to share the document? Yes, uh, give me one moment. Great. So it's in your packet that Carol sent out at the very, very end. <clears throat> and tonight we're wanting to go through the modifications that we've made to two of the strategies under funding um, based on the conversation that we had last month. And then we wanted to talk through the third goal of education and public engagement and the different strategies and to get some feedback from you on those strategies. So first with the funding, we had, um, based on our discussion last time, we had made some modifications to strategy B and strategy D, and we wanted to, to see if this um reflects the conversation that we had last time if you're comfortable with these changes so b um, was modified to seek a yearly cpa contribution from the town working toward an automatic minimum 15 percent recommended transfer with the option to request additional funds as needed so we had talked about the 15 percent and also adding the phrase of the option to request additional funds to make sure that 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 it's clear that that um, the trust would expect that in your relationship with the CPC. And then D, we modified. Um, so now it says research creative ways to develop additional funding sources to support trust goals. And then just some examples based on some of the conversation we had 
but not pigeon towing you into any particular strategy. And I just want to point out that the language is to support trust goals because there was some conversation that it wouldn't necessarily be funding that came directly to the trust necessarily, but that it would be resources that did support some of your goals, um, even if it didn't come directly to the trust. So I want to see how, how you're feeling about those changes, if that feels like it reflects the conversation last time. Who wants to jump in? I mean, just speaking for myself, the, um, I, I, I'm comfortable subject to what, uh, what my colleagues here say. Paul, please. I guess I'm not sure what automatic minimum means. I mean, that, that they, we, you know, CPA committee and the council can't commit future CPA committees or councils. So I, I think it can be, um, I, I just, I'm not sure if that, if it just means it's the word automatic and it, that's got me not sure what that really means. So the hope is to move towards the CPC automatically recommending a 15% transfer each year without the trust having to apply necessarily. So that's the goal is to move in that direction where the CPC just has the trust as a recommendation. Do other communities do that? Yes. Like which 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 community kind of got for that? Um, there are a variety of communities. Um, Grafton Greatest. has been a community, that, not necessarily fifteen percent, but where yeah. not every community requires the trust to actually um, fill out an application every time. They don't always require it to be for a specific purpose. So it depends on the community and the relationship between the trust and the CPC. If you could just send me some examples of those communities, that'd be helpful. I believe Cambridge does it as well um, because I had researched it when it's been a few years, so hopefully it hasn't changed, but I believe the uh, city of Cambridge does it as well. And Somerville as well. Oh, Somerville, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if, um, would would the word default rather than automatic, would that, uh, does, does, does that make any, any difference for anyone? I wonder. Or what about dropping automatic and just toward a minimum 15% recommended transfer? Yeah, I think that, that's easier for me. Okay, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, any, um, everyone else all right with that deletion? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I have one more question. 15% of what? Of the annual um, income that the CPC brings in. So, so, so it's... Uh, it's so it's, you know, there's the 10% that must go yeah. towards community housing. So this is 15% would request the 15% would actually come yeah. to the trust. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments or questions um, before we proceed to number three? Any, any comments, feedback on D or is that seems okay to folks? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So the third goal, your third goal is education and public engagement. So we've talked about this in the past that the goal that we've um, settled on is to develop a minimum of three outreach efforts a year to educate the community about local housing needs and build support for more affordable housing to further the goals of the trust. So there are five different strategies that we're going to go through tonight to get your feedback on how you feel about these. Um, the first one, A, is to hold an annual meeting among municipal boards to keep members abreast of local housing needs and build the partnership between boards. So we intentionally didn't list which boards these would be because that might change from year to year, but wanting to put out there um, that the trust will actively work to stay in communication with boards and to make sure that boards are kept abreast about any potential changes in housing needs and um, for the trust to be intentionally creating partnerships with different pertinent local boards. Should I pause after each one and have a conversation uh, or should we go through all five? How do you, what do you think? Well, if I can just ask a question here, I'm just curious, what's, what's our track record doing this?
Erica? Um, I don't think we, this year we actually met with the CRC, which I think was wonderful. Um, and it was the beginning, <clears throat> but I don't, I can't say if John met with other boards because I don't remember that. And I know he was very active, but as far as I remember being on the trust, um, we haven't really had meetings with other boards um, except for going to, um, you know, the CPA and asking for funding. Um, we worked with, you know, with, with Allegra's um, committee and with the Board of Health to do a community outreach event, but to really sort of present ourselves, share our action plan and talk about how we can work together. Um, and we had the reparations group come, but I, I don't I don't really feel it was very um, planful and um, thoughtful in, in terms of an action plan and doing that. So I think this is a great opportunity to be more um, judicious about how we, we reach out and work together, especially with the planning board, the zoning board, um, the town council. Thank you. Uh, Allegra? Um, I was just kind of going to say, I don't think we necessarily had an annual meeting, but we did collaborate with, like Erica said, the Community Safety Social Justice Committee, the Human Rights Commission, and the Board of Health to present a community meeting. So I think that that could be another area looking ahead at B, where maybe we're working in collaboration with other um other groups. I believe that during, you know, the height of COVID, there was a, we did some sort of collaboration with the um, energy committee, maybe, or put on some sort of more housing and energy focused um, like presentation. But okay. that, again, might not be exactly the same level that this is okay. talking about, but we, I think it's a good idea. We've got precedence um, of, of sorts. Carol? I mean, I've looked at this before with the little group committee, but I realize that my hope here is to encourage cross-fertilization fertilization and collaboration more than necessary having, having an annual meeting. So... I don't even know if I feel like that at this moment is the best way to say what at least I was hoping to get to. And I don't immediately have a better way to say it either, but it seems like it's not really just having a meeting. It's like, how do we inter how do we collaborate better with other committee me committees in town and groups in town that we ought maybe to know what's going on and would work better if we knew what each other were doing. Okay, what, um, maybe we, we should pr go forward and then we can let the verb that we want to use marinate uh, a minute. Okay, and A... Oh, Nate, a Nate, sorry, you just put up your hand, okay. Nate. Yeah, I was going to say that, um, you know, it sounds good, but, you know, there's so many boards and committees. And so, you know, it's like, you know, the trust could say, okay, well, you know, July 1 every year, we're going to invite every board and committee. Otherwise, it's going to take us months just to get to every other board and committee, right? It's just it that would become, you know, there there are so many between the you know, the subcommittees of the council, you know, finance committee, CRC, and then the other ones we've mentioned. And so, you know, I do like this. I mean, sometimes you know we had talked about doing a, a newsletter, a quarterly newsletter, or something. And so to me, it's like, is there a mechanism that we could send to other boards or committees? And maybe we make it interactive somehow, as opposed to having a static annual meeting. I mean, I think an annual meeting, I, I do like the idea of having something. We've talked about this, but trying to get a um, more consistent meeting with the planning board and CRC as it relates to housing goals and policies and, and you know, regulations. Um, but, you know, to Carol's point, it's like, is there, you know, could there be a, you know, something that is, you know, more frequent and say, I don't know, when I hear annual meeting, I just think like, okay, this is like, you know, the the big one once a year, but is there something that's a little bit more kind of like a working meeting or something that could happen mm -hmm. more frequently? So I'm wondering if just changing, if maybe it's instead of annual meetings, getting away from that, if it's something like hold strategic meetings among municipal boards. So what I was, what I am was kind of imagining is to be strategic around um, these kind of meetings with an eye towards your goals. So for example, you're working on the housing production plan, updating that, 
And we don't want to assume that different board members of keyboards um, necessarily are participating in, in that. And the CPC is particularly important because you're wanting funding from the CPC. So there could be a meeting um, when the housing production plan is being developed to pre be presenting that uh, a meeting at the CPC. So instead of just going to the CPC when you want money, go to them to make sure that they are understanding the housing needs in the community and to build a relationship that, so it could be get, let's get away from the annual meeting idea. And maybe we rephrase that a little bit. I, I, I think everyone likes that. And it's not just meeting, but it's disseminating information and, and collaborating. Um, so I, uh, it, I, I, I suspect that we're, we're, we would like a more kind of all of the above type mm -hmm. of language here. Okay. Okay, great feedback. Okay, so B, host, <laughs> there it was annual again, host annual community meeting to engage residents in the work of the trust relay current housing needs, seek feedback, and disseminate information about housing resources. I mean, partly why we're doing annuals because the goal is to have at least three, three events. So we're trying to make it so that we have at least that. So this kind of builds off of, uh, at least in the past, I don't know if you've done it in more recent years, but at least in the past, the it seems like the Amherst Trust would, would have some sort of annual um, community meeting where there were different years where you would present something you're working on and seek feedback from the community. And so it's kind of building off that idea that you've done in the past and then adding on um, disseminating information about housing resources. Yeah, I mean, before the trust, the, uh, you know, fair housing, um, there's a few different, you know, there's a housing and sheltering committee and before that it was housing partnership, fair housing committee, but we would meet in April, um, you know, for fair housing month. And then you know, it, it did happen pretty regularly in April. There was the expectation we'd have a bigger community meeting, uh, you know, whether it was just informational or things. And it hasn't been say as frequent or consistent, but I mean, in this instance, I think having, you know, something that the trust could, could highlight itself and engage the community uh you know it does take a while to plan this so you know if you want to have different people speak and have mm -hmm. tables and things i mean so you know like wow we could do this twice twice a year but you know you realize that it might take mm -hmm. three months two months to mm -hmm. get everything together mm -hmm. and so but i do like having kind of this you know calling this an annual community meeting and trying to make it something that people can expect right so it's like mm -hmm. you know do we invite other local agencies organizations um do we vary topics uh just yeah so I will just say that the small group, the planning group did go back and forth about, do we call it a meeting? Do we call it something else? And so we just decided to call it a meeting at this point. Any other thoughts on this one at this point? Good. Um, yeah, I just wanna query folks. Um, uh, appetite for the idea of layering this a little bit. So for example, we are doing very much this with the housing production plan, right? And like, does it make sense to do a, a, a totally separate thing or should I, should we jump on the opportunity to layer, you know, and, um, you know, and it, you know, if, if as a staff level, if I'm gonna be whipping outreach for a community meeting, we know we have to do these with the housing production plan. Does it, you know, can we look for strategic opportunities to, to sync these things up or, or do folks prefer to see this specific thing exclusively to the trust's work? Erica? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by layering, but uh, in terms of taking opportunities. Um, so for example, last year, 
we did the introduction to Wayfinder when they uh, wanted to do a community engagement with regards to the um, Belchertown Road and East Street. So we actually presented on what the needs were of um, of Amherst and, you know, what are some of the, you know, what's the data? Uh, what does it look like? Why do we need this? So it was an opportunity for the trust mm -hmm. to um, co-facilitate with them, but to also then present from a larger perspective, things that we've accomplished, things that we have done and things that we still need to do according to the data that was presented. So uh, I like using opportunities. I mean, I think it's also important to, I mean, I heard what you said, Nate, in terms of people knowing this time of the month, this is when we do something and so we all get everybody together. But I think it's also important to use opportunities um, and to collaborate uh, on significant events such as this housing production plan if we have opportunities to be out there and talk about what the needs are and what the trust is doing, what you know the CRC is doing. And here's an opportunity for you to have feedback because the town is creating this huge plan and you know your feedback is important around that. So yeah, um, absolutely. I don't think we should just limit it to what we consider sort of a traditional forum. I, I wonder if, by actually removing annual and just saying host community meetings, we're closer to the spirit of what we're talking about because that would include the meetings that Greg is talking about. Um, I, what What do you think, Shelley, of that suggestion? I want to put it out to you. And yeah. Carol, do you want to add to that? Because it, it, this really needs to be reflect what you, yeah. your group feels is appropriate. Um, I really thought that number C says a lot about what both Greg and Erica are talking about, review upcoming town events and identify opportunities for the trust to participate. I mean, we ought to be doing that all the time. And the good thing about, I think the good thing about an annual meeting is what Nate suggested, is that if it actually, <laughs> if it happens at a regular time each year, then it maybe becomes something that people know to look forward to. And the question to me, though, is will we actually come up with separate from all the other things that are going on, just separately with nothing else to hang it on? Will we come up with being able to do some kind of a good way to engage residents if it's not hooked to some particular project or some particular activity? And I don't know. So I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. The one that seems really crucially important to me is the one that's in C. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the question. Is it important? For, do we feel it's important to commit to doing a um, an annual meeting and creating that tradition, Erica? Sorry, I would advocate for leaving B and C and maybe with B, instead of um, ho just host community meetings to engage residents minimally once a year. Um, and so instead of just annual, because it sounds, annual sounds sort of, you know, really fixed. Um, but I, I mean, I, I believe what we did with our community meeting and our community outreach was really important. Um, and so I think, you know, having something like that uh, is important. And I know, Nate, you said April, but I remember when John was on board, we did a community forum, community housing forum in September. It mm -hmm. seemed like it was always September um, in terms of when I was here. So um, I would leave it there. It's a goal. And if we have enough members who can start planning for it and is interested, we, we'll make sure it happens. Nate? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. John, right. I think with John, it was September, October. I was going to say, well, even during COVID, we had done, you know, a Zoom series. You know, one was about, um, you know, mm -hmm. fair housing. One was, you know, housing mm -hmm. discrimination or energy mm -hmm. efficiency in housing, uh, renting to voucher holders. And they were really uh, well attended. And so, you know, I felt like it actually encouraged, um, especially the one after renting uh, to voucher holders or affordable tenants, we actually had you know, a, a, you know, a few property owners call the town to follow up to, to do that. And so I, hmm. you know, having, whether it's, you know, having a series of a few meetings, I feel like having those in say three meetings over four months or five months, it really helped to me get people more aware of the trust. And so, you know, even if, 
you know, that goes back to some of these other ones, C or D, but having a few meetings in succession was to me really effective at, you know, and, and there are different topics at getting different people involved. So the one with the rental piece, we actually emailed all the property owners and managers associated with the rental registration. And so, you know, we try to, you know, we contacted, you know, 700 different entities uh, and, you know, let them know about what we were doing. And so, and then for the next one, there are other ways of outreach. So to me, th those are really, really helpful community engagement efforts. And so, you know, they could fall into a few of these, but I, I think those work really well. And it, and it wasn't, you know, like this big annual meeting, but. Erica? Sorry, that was a ghost. Okay. Um, so what, what to, to Erica's suggestion, what if instead of annual meeting, because that can seem really formal, nonprofits have to have an annual meeting. So if we just say host community meeting at least once a year to engage residents in the work of the trust. So it's perhaps a bit more flexible. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm hearing everyone uh, subscribes to that goal. Okay, so we'll just restructure that a little bit. See how that feels. Okay, and then so C, Carol kind of jumped in the C is review upcoming town events and identify opportunities for the trust to participate. So it's, it's a little bit squishy where it's not measurable so much, but you could potentially have a subcommittee of a couple of you that keep an eye on the calendar and what's coming up and then make proposals to the full board about what you engage in. I have a question about a, a form of engagement that occurred to me, which would be like the trust sending a letter to the editor of the Amherst Gazette um, as a kind of communication outreach type of um, activity advocacy. And I guess I'm not sure where it would fit here if, if it's important to try to have one of these goals encompass that sort of activity. I could imagine kind of uh, revising C to try to capture that possibly, um, but maybe maybe it's not really that related. Um, but none, none of the others seem to get to um, advocacy outside the town. What do others think? Carol. It's a good point. And uh, I mean, the other thing that's left out here is any of our attempts to advocate with the state and to, you know, write letters to legislators and things in order to try to advocate for the things that we want to see the state of Massachusetts do that would help us out. Um, somehow that and the kind of advocacy that would be what Gaston is talking about art here and yeah it's something that we have done at least to some extent and it feels kind of missing to me so we did talk about it with a smaller group and because this specific goal is about um, educating the community about local housing needs and building support for affordable housing locally that there was some discussion of does does everything that you do necessarily need to be captured in these goals and strategies or can there be um, and understanding that there are other things that won't completely be captured in these. So we did decide to, to not hmm. try to broaden the goal. Um, but it's a, it's a decision that you make, cause it, it, I don't think it really fits into this goal. So it'd either be modifying the goal or be creating a whole nother goal or just understanding that there are other things that you do that don't fit into these. Erica, do you want to piggyback on that? Yeah, uh, we did have that conversation. And I think you kept on reminding us, do you want to have an advocacy goal? Uh, because that's what it would be. It was a, would be a goal that focused on advocacy, trying to sort of push policy. So it's, it's something that the group has to make a decision on. Um, but I, I think, you know, what you said is it's either we have a uh, fourth goal, which we're going beyond what we committed to in terms of three, um, uh, or we, you know, there are things that we do do um, that's not going to be under this. So are we looking for giving ourselves credit for all that we're doing, or these are the priorities? 
Greg? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, when I use the term layering before, but I think some of these goals can be stacked, you know, and I, and I think in terms of, you know, Nate mentioned some previous forums that the trust, you know, so we've already gone this route, you know, has done forums about, I think, I guess it was fair housing, or I know there's some, um, some, some housing and climate change related um, uh, panels that happened in the past, um, you know, so policy stuff that's kind of outside the formal purview of the trust, but frankly also is um, useful, uh, a useful thing to hang an engagement effort on. So if we want to be more connected to the community and we were going to have an annual event, we're going to need content beyond what the trust is doing to bring people in the door. So for example, I could imagine that as, um, come and hear a presentation about why Amherst, you know, needs a, a home rule for uh, a housing transfer fee, for example, you know, um, you know, and then so it would serve the engagement goal here and then speak to some of the advocacy stuff, uh, you know, we, so we, we could use those advocacy items to kind of push through these these goals here specifically. Or whatever's hot in a given moment. You know, um, the I I appreciate now the distinction with the advocacy um, and the activity I was thinking of writing a letter to the editor, even if it's for communication locally, I think it it's encompassed here and it doesn't need its own um, letter or anything. So I, I'm I'm personally OK to keep moving to D if is everyone comfortable with um, with C. Yeah, OK. The last thing I would just say is that this process of goals and strategies isn't supposed to completely contain you. Like things will come up and it, it won't be in, and it doesn't mean that you don't do those things. Um, this is just to help kind of focus you and um, help the community understand the things that you're you're focused on, but, but not to restrict you from doing anything else outside of this. So D says, and this came out of the conversation last time, uh, identify targeted constituency group or groups based on housing cost burden data in the housing production plan to build relationships, awareness, and participation. So it was suggested last time this idea of potentially every year or every couple of years identifying a, a a constituency group in town that has been highlighted in the housing production plan that the trust would intentionally try to build a relationship with to um, better understand the needs of those folks, to bring them into the community and invite them into the work that you're doing, um, but that there would be real intentionality in this, not just a blanket come to our meetings, but really intentionally trying to build a relationship with whatever con constituency group or groups are identified in, in any given year. My, my only comment here would be to replace the word to with and so that the building is, is, the, is the activity, is the goal, because the plan's gonna identify the groups, right? So our work would be the building. That again, which what 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 word would you uh, change? replace before to build replace to with and so and that, build mm -hmm. and so what you know our part of it is the building. Mm -hmm. Other reactions from anyone or thoughts? Carol. I like I like what it says and and Gaston's change of two to and helps, but it still doesn't seem it still seems kind of like a clunky sentence or way to say it. It's get it having to have it be based on the housing, based on blah 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 in the middle of it makes it I don't know. I mean the point is to build relationships with some targeted groups. And the way they get identified thrown in the middle of the sentence. I just feel like it's clunky and awkward, but it's sort of all right, I guess. So, I mean, maybe maybe starting the sentence from build relationships with, you know, the yeah. target. Okay, maybe just flipping the order. That might help.
Okay. So we can consider restructuring the sentence a bit. Okay, I'll set to move to E. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, and then E is, this is the one that had been under funding and it was modified. And then we're trying here under goal three. And I, I will, I think I will start out and say that the subcommittee is still uncertain if this is appropriate in this space here, but we're, we're going to put it out there for conversation. So E is collaborate with the permitting board in reviewing inclusionary zoning developments to provide affordable housing insight. Paul? Well, so I don't think this is where it should go, but I think this is one of the more important things that we should be doing and allocating some funds into seeing if the IZ uh, is actually working um, and I, I'm not sure if it's something the trust should be doing or the planning board, but um, I think it's a it's an important conversation for the town to have because um, I know there's a lot of challenges. I mean, we're it seems like we're creating units, um, and then we're hoping hopefully we don't know what the um, how are we doing kind of question is what I'm wondering with this. But I'm not sure if it's it's in this particular section mm -hmm. or if it's really the trust role necessarily. So some of the conversation, and I, I don't remember exactly which meetings you were at, Paul, or maybe that you weren't at all of them, but some of the conversation was that um, the trust doesn't necessarily isn't necess doesn't necess isn't necessarily engaged in all inclusionary zoning development conversations, but perhaps just when in lieu of payment is on the table. And the interest is just that the trust would be more actively engaged in all of the inclusionary zoning developments just to offer um, some affordable housing insight in that. And so there was some interest in just trying to build the relationship with the permitting board to make to make sure that the trust is included. Um, so that's it started more like um, in lieu of payments to to try to increase like in lieu of payments to the board. But then there was discomfort of, well, we don't want to have in lieu of instead of affordable units, like we want affordable units too. So then it became less of a funding and more of a, um, that the that the trust just be included in the conversations. Yeah, okay. I, I, I get that. I think that makes sense actually. Then to say, we care about this issue. We mm -hmm. want to be part of the conversation. That's what this is saying. Yeah. And so then the, sure. the thing is like, does it go under education and public engagement? Is that a stretch? Do we... Do we just have this as something that you work on, but it's not necessarily squeezed into one of these goals? So we went back and forth on this. Erica? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gaston. No, no, please. Uh, um, so I think it is sort of important because it seems that um, the permitting board has a lot of sway and power. Um, and I think the other conversation that I was part of was, um, you know, sometimes we sign off and we didn't even know that um, there was a project uh, being developed, that there were apartments being developed. So, I mean, I really think it's important for us to do this, but my thing is, is that does it fit actually under A? And is right. that where it belongs? <laughs> um, it's just that it seems that this was just so important and it comes up so often. That's why we might have put it separately and it came actually out of the funding one that we moved mm -hmm. into the education piece. But I'm just wondering if maybe we just put it, you know, mm -hmm. like a little ghost next to the end of A. <laughs> or maybe we put it as F under development, like you were saying. Greg? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of with Erica in that since we, noting the adjustment we just made to A, which is we went from an annual meeting to sort of strategic engagement with other boards, including permanent boards, right? They would be inclusive of that. So if we're talking about wanting to weigh in when there's a proposal before a permanent board for market rate development that would include inclusionary housing, then we could strategically engage with that board as we've written in A now, you know, now that A is no longer that annual dynamic, but sort of 
acting strategically when there's a pertinent issue to jump on. This would certainly be an example of that. So it might be redundant to the current version of A now with the update that we made to it tonight. And, or what and, about what about okay. moving it to development? Can I talk? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, that, I like the idea of moving it to development. It's actually about making sure that we get the unit and that once they are gotten, we know what that we know what's going on, that we help with that aspect of development, which is how do you use inclusionary zone inclusionary zoning to get more development. It really I didn't think about it before, but I feel like it fits really well under development. Erica? That's where it originally was. I think it was our <laughs> Feeling of yes, it I was. was surprised. That's where it was. And then we started feeling, uh, well, maybe it has to do with language, but we started feeling a little torn that we didn't want to seem as if we were saying, you know, we want the money, don't have the apartments. But I think what we're saying is we want to be part of the decision making process and exploring the best alternatives for the town of Amherst. I think that's what we want. We, we, we're not pushing one or the other. We just wanna make sure we're getting um, the best uh, solution for affordable housing for Amherst. Does anyone have concerns about moving this up in the strategy? Would we need to revise, would we want to revise the wording if we move it up to a different section? Nate? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was gonna say that um, a lot of projects now are, um, you know, required to provide affordable units uh, because of inclusionary zoning. And so, you know, for instance, uh, the planning board continued a hearing last night without taking testimony to the end of August for 422 Amity Street. It's the um, project by Barry Roberts that received a variance earlier. So, you know, it's um, like say 90 units, there'll be, you know, um, you know, 12% of those will be affordable. And so, you know, the planning board in that instance will just say, well, you know, you have to, you know, you will take the 12 units, the developer is, is proposing it and there really isn't much of a discussion uh, with the planning board, right? They just, there's a, we kind of have a standard set of conditions in terms of how they need to be, um, you know, have a regulatory agreement and marketed. I think we might add a condition or two to kind of have post-occupancy follow-up to Paul's point, because, you know, we hear that inclusionary units then aren't being filled readily or quickly. Um, and so, you know, it's just one of those things where it could be that like, you know, once a month or, you know, they, that the the ZBA or planning board is actually reviewing a project that will provide some inclusionary units. And so I, I guess, you know, the question for me would be how, you know, how does the trust uh, interact with that? You know, is it, do we come up with a statement or some ideas there? Because otherwise essentially it's like, you know, I don't think the board necessarily will, will hold its review to then have the trust to review the project as well, right? I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like, how do you synthesize that information and synchronize it? And so, um, you know, and sometimes the, the planning board will seek trust uh, opinion and help, but say for this one, the developer was gonna, you know, provide the units and then typically we wouldn't seek the trust involvement, uh, you know, and, and do we need to, but I just think that it becomes something that might happen more frequently than, you know, the trust could weigh in on easily in, in the permitting process. Erica, you want to respond to that? Or is your hand up from before? 
There must be a ghost in my computer. Okay. Uh, okay. Did not have a hand up. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> but well, I, you know, I, I, in thinking about it, um, it sounds to me that the process could take, you know, the specifics of the process could take place a little bit afterwards. I still think this might be a good one to put back under uh, number one. Carol? And I, I mean, it's, even if the, okay, the developer comes to the planning board or whoever it is and says, we're going to put in the 12 units that we're supposed to put in and here's the rest of the plan and that's all there is to talk about. I would still like to know about that. And the way it is now, we don't even know that happened. And so if the collaboration is that we sort of have a way of finding out when those things are going on and decide if we want to just go to the meeting or something or other, even just being able to be aware of what's happening. And then if we have something to say, well, then we'll say it, but then maybe we won't, but knowing it's happening, we won't ever know if we have anything to say if we don't even know that they're happening. Well, based on Nate's comments and, and your comments just now, Carol, I wonder if what we want to do is beef up C to be, you know, to 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 be clear that the town events include, you know, permitting board meetings and, and the like, that that's what we want to be staying attuned to. Is 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 that how others are seeing it? Erica? If we're going to leave it in education and awareness, I would say we it, it fits better under A. Uh. I, I mean, I don't personally feel too strongly about wh where this is. It's clear that it's important for us to be aware of what's going on in the other boards and, and chime in when we should, and that it's going to take being pretty proactive to do so. Um, so what, where, where would people like to record this kind of commitment? Allegra? Um, I kind of feel like an AE merge of sorts might help, like maybe not specifying an annual meeting, but talking about collaborating with other municipal boards um, where issues of affordable housing are relevant. So um, if picking up on your comments, Allegra, maybe it's maybe we want to keep the, the words inclusionary zoning developments, that phrase in the in a modified A to, to highlight that that's a particular area that we want to be collaborating on. Yeah, I mean, I think that could make sense. Shelley, what do you think from uh, the, the pieces fitting together right? I think that those are, to me, it's really different because the inclusionary zoning is such a specific policy. And to Carol's point, so I wanted, I wanted to ask Nate, like, what is the best way for the trust to know when developments are coming before the permitting board? Because if, if that's, and maybe the language is, modified to provide affordable housing insight when appropriate or something because it it you wouldn't to carol's point you wouldn't necessarily comment on every single one but just to know to have familiarity about what what is going on in the community where affordable units are being proposed yeah so that's right that I just what is greg. the best way yeah i just emailed greg and said we need to add them to uh the transmittals when there's planning board and zba projects so I think, you know, staff has done that, um, you know, for all those projects, typically to like police, fire, health, you know, certain board and committee representatives. Um, and so I think we could specifically, you know, um, you know, add Greg and then I don't think we can filter out, you know, the inclusionary zoning pro um, projects, but, it, you know, at least there is, you know, we do those um, at the beginning of every project before they get to the board. And so I think, you know, getting it at that stage um, in the permitting would be helpful. And so I think that's probably what's missing is having some kind of, um, you know, formalized, you know, transmittal or some kind of, 
some some kind of feedback there. So I, I think we can work with that. Um, and then Greg, so Greg would be notified of the different proposals that are coming before the board, and then Greg could notify the trust, and the trust could decide whether they wanted to participate in the process or comment. Right. And then perhaps that's enough to start building a relationship that the permitting board knows that the trust is engaged, interested, and wants to participate. Maybe, Carol, you have your hand up. Maybe that's enough to drop E because we'll have this other way of addressing this concern, maybe. Carol? I think it's, I think that you figured out a way to let us help possibly implement this, but I don't think it should not be here because we've True. thought of a way to implement it. Do you, what do you think about the, is it similar enough to A to include it or do you think it should be a separate? Personally, I think it should still be separate. I think it's, mm -hmm. there's so much in A that there's almost ends up to be nothing left in it. I think that this on its own is because of the inclusionary zoning thing, I think it's really important enough that it should stand by itself as my two cents. I guess if, if no one ob objects to the language as such, um, now that we have so much clarity about it, maybe just putting it as B so it's right after, so the two that are similar are back to back. Was, was there disagreement of putting it in development? Um, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, the, the, that, the, this is where development and, and this com communicating with other committees and boards intersects, right? I mean, so, um, to me, I guess it's more natural to highlight the activity of it, which is about this relationship and communicating with other committees. But I, I don't really, I don't, I don't have a, it doesn't really matter to me um, where we include the sentence. Uh, does anyone else have a, a strong preference about where we put the, the, the commitment? Erica? Um, I just want to give you a time check. It's 8.56. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do actually have a, I, I do feel very strongly that it belongs in number one, and that's right. where it was before. And the reason being is that um, having it in number one and then um, having it affirmed as number three A in terms of strategically meeting with other municipalities makes gives it more oomph um, for us to keep track of and to actually do it. So that's my opinion. But um, maybe this small subgroup needs to put it in a and bring it back and see how people feel. Well, I mean, does anyone here object to moving it up to development uh, as an activity of development? Um, then, you know, I, I, I would defer to the people who feel strongly about it. I think the commitment is clear. We've all now understood what it, why we have it here. And um, so I, I don't, I would defer to um, to Erica's view here myself. Okay. Okay, so we will, um, the, our, the small group meets next, I think it's next week, and we'll go through this again and bring back, um, hopefully maybe a final, um, proposal to the full board for next month and hopefully we'll be able to wrap this up. Thanks so much for your feedback Thank tonight. You so I really much, appreciate Shelley. it. Thank Absolutely. You. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Shelly, as always. Thank you. Uh, given the fact that we're missing a few members tonight, three of our group, I, I suggest we postpone the, um, the vice chair election till next month. And, um, are there any critical town updates to 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 hear about tonight? Then, what I would like to just uh, sound out briefly for for the group is this: um, uh, it occurred to me, you know, I have some interest in seeing how we can creatively try to promote the ADUs. We now have state law facilitating it further, and there's an opportunity, it seems, to try to 
ride the wave of that state law. And um, so one idea I had was to invite B Backyard ADUs, which is doing a lot of good work trying to promote ADUs to come to the block party and and maybe even come talk to us at some point. I wanted to see if, if members um, are okay with that idea or like that idea. And then um, Greg pointed out that part of the ADU issue in Amherst may go back to difficulties that um, a, a previous project had and and times have changed. And so it occurred to me, there's an opportunity to do a little education. And this was my idea of a letter to the editor telling the community about the change in law and telling them about backyard ADUs coming to the block party if, if that comes together. Uh, Paul, please. So town staff are now looking at the state law that recently passed and comparing it to our current bylaw. So I think we need to do a little bit of analysis to understand and to understand if we need to change our bylaw to bring it into compliance. There's, you know, like we require residency, the state law does not. There's a discrepancy in the square footage. So I think before we start promoting something, when they if someone comes into the building department right now, they're gonna say, well, we have two different things on the books. Okay. I think the planning department or the building department has to get its act in order and gear to to say and go to the council, say we need to change the bylaw to bring it into compliance. So I think we're it's a little premature. Okay. Um, I think it's but it's but I there's a lot of attention on it. And, and I know uh, the building commissioner was looking at that comparing the doing the work on that this week, actually. OK, um, uh, Greg. Yeah, and I guess it's law in six months is when that policy okay. comes to effect. Six months from yesterday, I think it was uh, when she said. OK, it. good. Uh, OK, um, uh, well, I guess uh, if Nate and Greg, if you guys can keep me posted and, and see if um, maybe the, there's enough clarity that we might still try to get backyard ADUs out here for the block party, Nate. Yeah, sure. Greg has mentioned this. Um, you know, UMass is also doing um, kind of a pilot uh, ADU build. Um, you know, they're building in Amherst and then they're um, transporting them to Holyoke, I believe. So, you know, they're also one. Uh, there is a workshop at the end of the month for um, municipal officials on the new law. So I know some staff is attending that. I think there are a lot of questions. And so Judy Barrett actually is uh, helping to host that. Um, that workshop. And so, you know, on, on, on a listserv, there's been a lot of questions asked, you know, uh, Paul mentioned some, but you know, the, you know, there's so many nuances uh, that and intricacies of what, you know, a simple regulation may miss or not. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's a lot of questions right now in terms of, you know, for instance, can you have five ADUs on a property? Um, and that might, you know, can you, you know, what does it look like? What happens? And so the way we've been saying it is, you know, it's an ADU, and yeah, so anyways, I think there's a lot to, to okay. work out. I think the intention is, you know, in the States always, you know, programs have said this, that ADUs are lowercase a affordable. So they're not necessarily on the subsidized housing inventory. They're not, you know, deed restricted. They're not, you know, capital A, but due to their size and, you know, relatively lower costs that they're affordable for that reason. And so they see it as like a really nice uh, housing production tool. And so, you know, I think... Okay. Amherst does as well. It's just now, like Paul mentioned, there's, you know, we have to make sure that we're compliant with, with the legislation. So. Okay. Okay. So, well, uh, conversations open. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till uh, that advances. Greg. No. Oh, okay. Carol. Um, I'm just wondering, Nate, you said there's a thing coming up for municipal people to understand the law. And is that something that we might attend and if so would somebody let us know when it is and how to do it okay great erica mine's really quick um if we're going to wait it might be a great forum for us to um organize and i'd be willing to work with somebody to do it wonderful um well then i think we're, we're just three minutes past the hour um uh do we have a motion to adjourn I don't know if you, maybe you, you guys don't use that formality here. Um, so, uh, so we have a motion, Carol. Well, first I wanted to say I think we let's remit, let's notice what Greg sent us about uh, wayfinders coming to the ZBA. So there might be some of us that want to be there or something or other, and I think that's before our next meeting. So that's just an announcement. And yes, I move that we adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Everyone, in, all in favor. 
Hi. Uh, yeah, hi. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks. Great meeting, Gaston. Thank you. Thank you, Gaston. Thank you. Right. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night.